I don't get to make my marks till later, but I just want to say to the class of 2019, welcome to college. So I have the great pleasure of starting the academic year with doing something that I've been looking forward to doing now for months, which is introducing Giancarlo Vita, the president of the student body. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Giancarlo Vita. I'm a junior here at Denison studying communications in Spanish, and I'm the president of DCGA, or the uh, Denison Campus Governance Association. So uh, yeah, let's start. Uh, I can't tell you what the next four years will, be, uh, will have in store for any of you. I can't promise that you'll find yourself or what initially led you to this place, but I can tell you that you made the right choice. Denison is a great place. I have personally found my own home while walking down the hallways of my dorm by meeting the people whom I'll always admire and trust and by realizing that this is my time for personal growth. The next four years are for you to learn about the world. Find what you're passionate about and what you want to inspire, uh, sorry, what you aspire to achieve, and most importantly, to learn what you are and why you're here. It doesn't matter what your upbringing has been like, what makes you a unique individual, or what you aspire to become. You are here to focus on personal growth and furthering your knowledge to become well-rounded individuals. Today, you are being inducted to become a Denisonian for life. If there's anything I could recommend you gain through your time at Denison is acceptance of others. Although we are raised to accept difference from an early age, not all of us are used to living and engaging with those who are different. Don't allow these differences to uh, keep you from reaching out to others and bridging the social gaps that you may see. We are all here to expand our minds and knowledge. And one of the greatest ways to do this is learning from those with you. Some of the best teachers don't have degrees yet. They're sitting next to you. These are the people whom you'll learn and share memories with. Take pride in being Denison students. Take pride in the fact that this beautiful school on the hill is where you'll live and learn for the next four years and one day be able to call your alma mater. This is a place that will change you to become a better person. Take advantage of that. You can make this place what you want it to become by simply getting involved. The best way to spend your time is doing the things you love. So obviously take the classes that you care about, but also go out and take part of the organizations that you care about too. However, do not, and I really, really recommend, do not join every single group. That's a very common thing that Denison students do. Choose the ones you're passionate about and really dedicate your time to shape these groups and learn from the individuals who care about them. This campus has many organizations that allow you to make an impact and gain the pride for the school that allow you, that will make your time here so much more enjoyable. The reason I'm talking to you guys, members of class of 2019, is because of the pride I have in saying I'm a Denisonian now and will be for the rest of my life. And I'm certain I got this appreciation by being part of the things I care about. Along with being involved with what you already love or will grow to love, take advantage of the fact that this is the time to explore new interests and passions. Leave your comfort zones and discover all the things that the Hill has to offer. Whether that be courses about places, people, or ideas you know little about, community service, cultural groups, or Greek life, there is something to gain from every aspect of campus. Give yourself the time to explore and get lost in the richness of what surrounds us. We have a 350-acre bioreserve. How sweet is that? So you are here to find your own path in life, but don't forget the importance of building relationships. You don't only learn from being in a classroom or from reading books, although that is certainly what you're here to do. Not going to discourage that. But you also learn by interacting with the people that are different from you. Don't overlook the people that live next to you, those you walk next to in Slater, and all the professors and staff that'll challenge you. Reach out and make relationships because all of these people are fascinating in their own ways and the stories they bring can have a great impact on you. A professor once told me, happiness is multiplied by those you share it with. Surrounding yourself with people who care about you and your passions is one of the best ways to share the good times, but it is also the best way to make it through the hardships and difficulties that might come your way. The next four years, 
our new chapter in your lives. I bet you've all heard this before, but make the most of it. The time goes by fast. I'm standing here halfway through college, and I feel like I was just where you guys were sitting a week ago. Got lost. <laughs> Take your responsibilities seriously, but don't forget to also have a good time here. Finally, I'd like to emphasize the importance of reaching out when you need help. Either that be to an RA, to a friend, a professor, or medical staff at Whistler, you have numerous outlets to reach out in time of need. Denison is a community, and we are help, here to help each other out. Leave your worries behind and enjoy the next chapter of your lives. Welcome, class of 2019. <laughs> Almost missed my uh, cue, also. Uh, I will now ask uh, Julie Hupp, Vice President of Institutional Advancement and Denison alumna, to join me in the podium, please. Good evening. As John said, my name is Julie Haup, and I'm a proud member of the Denison class of 1975. Please don't do the math. <laughs> and it's my privilege to welcome you to the Denison family on behalf of the Denison family. By becoming a student here, you've become a member of the Denison family. This family consists of your fellow students, the faculty and staff, more than 30,000 alumni, as well as parents of Denison students and friends of the college from Granville and Licking County. Members of this family can be found all over the country and all over the world, and they are ready to help you in all kinds of ways. Just like your own family, the members of the Denison family have traditions and values. Values like integrity, respect, loyalty, and gratitude. And gratitude is the Denison value and tradition that I want to talk to you about this evening. Most of you, in fact, almost all of you, were given some form of scholarship aid to come to Denison. A few of you even received full tuition. But even if you didn't receive a formal financial aid package, you've all actually received a scholarship to Denison. Denison's operating budget each year is a little over $100 million. That budget pays for everything from salaries and health benefits to light bulbs and athletic equipment, from carpet and paint to beakers and computers. You get the idea. Tuition covers some of that cost, but only about half. A big chunk of the rest of those expenses, about 40, 45 million dollars, is covered by the Denison family through gifts to the annual fund and special gifts that go into endowment and build buildings. And here's what's really important about that 45 million dollars. The alums and parents and grandparents who support the college financially do it out of gratitude and a tradition of giving back. Gratitude for what the college did for them or their children. Gratitude for the professor who opened their mind to ideas and opportunities they'd never considered before. Gratitude for coaches who believed in them even when they didn't believe in, them, believe in themselves. Gratitude for a staff member who took a chance on them. Gratitude for friendships that started here and have lasted a lifetime. Gratitude for an educational experience that shaped their adult lives, often in ways they never could have imagined. Someone said that feeling grateful and not expressing it is like wrapping a present and not giving it. So just as members of the Denison, Denison family who provide financial support show their gratitude, you'll have the opportunity to show your gratitude too. It's pretty easy, really. Here are a few things you can do right away to show your gratitude for the remarkable gift you've been given of a Denison education. Number one, go to class. Go to class on time. <clears throat> number two, do your homework. Number three, <laughs> number three, participate in class on a team in a student organization. Number four, respect this campus and respect the village of Granville. Pick up your mess, and sometimes pick up somebody else's mess. Be kind to your roommate, your classmate, your teammate, your professor, the folks who work in the dining hall, and the folks who are going to shovel these walks this winter, because yes, in case you don't know, it snows here. And one more way to show your gratitude. 
Many of you will get an email in a few weeks from a staff member named Maureen Severson, Severson who directs stewardship activities at Denison. And she's going to ask you to write a personal note to the donor who gave the money that established the scholarship that allowed you to come to Denison. Write that note. Write it immediately. Doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to tell your life story. Donors do like to hear maybe what you're going to major in or whether you're an artist or an athlete. They like to hear that you like Game of Thrones or country music. The point is, write the note and do it right away. And write it with gratitude. Gratitude is just one of the values and traditions we hold dear here at Denison. You'll hear about some others tonight and in the weeks to come as you learn more about what it means to be a member of this family. Another tradition is to have two students serve as representatives of your class at this ceremony. We select the two uh, as the student whose hometown is farthest away from Denison and the home and student whose hometown is closest. So I'm going to ask Kelly West, who's from Granville and lives about two miles from campus, and Anto, who's come from Ho Chi Minh City, to join me on the stage. This is the banner for the class of 2019. Behind you, hanging on Slater and from the pergolas, are class banners of students who have preceded you over the previous century. You will see your banner again when you graduate, and then it will join the others as part of Denison's historical record, and it will be displayed in Swayze Chapel every year on reunion weekend. So from the Denison family to the newest members of the Denison family, welcome to your new home. It is now my pleasure to introduce you to Dr. Steve Vogel, who will welcome you on behalf of the faculty. So welcome to Denison, as everyone is going to say to you today and already has. I'm the chair of the faculty. I'm a member of the philosophy department, and I'm, I'm really happy to represent the faculty in welcoming you here. We're excited to have you here, and we're looking forward to getting to, to know you. Denison is a fabulous place, and you've made a terrific decision to come to school here. I know you're excited, and I suspect that you're probably a little terrified as well. Uh, I, I actually remember my own arrival in Granville uh, many years ago after having lived my whole life in large East Coast cities. I drove out that August day on I-70 in a U-Haul, and then I, I took that exit onto Route 37 up to Granville um, and f immediately found myself surrounded by corn of a height I had never imagined the possibility of, and I literally just began to scream. <laughs> like, where am I? Um, you may feel occasionally the same way. Uh, your parents, I suspect, are feeling more scared than you are now although maybe also excited. I'll have something to say to them later on, but for now I just want to talk to you. Um, because today's a really important day, and not just because it's the beginning of your college career and your time at Denison. I just said welcome to Denison, but now I want to say something else. Welcome to adulthood. Because as of today, you're adults. That's the key difference between high school and college, and it's one that you should always keep in mind. High school students are kids, and college students are grown-ups. I know you don't feel like grown-ups. You're thinking right now, I'm scared to be here, what's gonna happen, I don't know what I'm doing, everybody else has it together, but I don't. But guess what, we all feel that way, we grown-ups. Um, I actually feel that way right now, <laughs> giving this speech. The great secret of adulthood that, that adults keep from kids um, is that this is what adulthood feels like. Uh, Kids think that grown-ups have reached some magical point when everything is clear and you know what to do, but actually that point never comes. So welcome to adulthood. Being an adult means, above all, making your own decisions, being responsible for your own life. That's why I said just before that you had made a terrific decision to come to Denison, because it was you who made that decision, or at least it better have been. 
Grown-ups don't let other people make decisions for them, and you shouldn't either, grown-ups. You went to high school because you pretty much had to. Uh, but coming here, that's on you. And you made a great choice. We've got a fantastic faculty, high faculty, um, a, a beautiful campus, a thoughtful and caring administration, a wonderful curriculum, fabulous facilities, great opportunities for extracurricular involvement, and so forth. But it was your choice, nobody else's. And I don't just mean the choice to come here either, actually. I mean, even more seriously, the choice to go to college at all. You decided this, and congratulations on the decision. And by the way, and I'll only say this once and quietly, because some people might get upset if I say it too loudly, if anything I'm saying here isn't true, if you suddenly realize that you did choose this and you don't choose it, then you know what you should do, grown-ups. You should leave. So, good. <laughs> so the thing is, it's very expensive to come here. Uh, uh, Julie was just talking about it. Those facilities, that administration, that faculty don't come cheap. Um, it's incredibly expensive, as you know. It's $58,860 a year, I looked it up. And as very new adults, hardly any of you are in a position to pay anything like that. So many of you have taken out loans to come here, and that's an impressive indication of how much you believe in your decision. And as Julie said, it, it, there are other folks who've, who've helped too. In, in most of your cases, there are incredibly generous people who have given you, given you, money to come here. Um, in many cases, your parents or other members of your family who, who love you so much that they're offering you this amazing gift and you owe them enormous gratitude and thanks, like we should applaud them. Um, in a, in a lot of cases, you've, you've got money from the government, too, which is just another word from your fellow citizens. Uh, and it and those citizens deserve your gratitude as well. And as Julie pointed out, another institution that's helping many of you enormously, and really all of you, is Denison itself, which is so admirably committed to making it possible for people of diverse backgrounds and classes to come here, and which offers so much financial aid. Um, and of course, Denison's ability to help current students is itself the product of previous generations of Denison students who love the place and continue to support it. And they deserve our thanks, too. But again, I want to be clear. You're the one who made the decision to, to come here, and you're the one who's paying. Those other people and organizations may have given you money to do that, and you owe them tons of gratitude, but still, grown-ups, you're paying. There are a lot of implications of that, and you might not have thought about them. Just one, for instance, when your grades come out, they're going to come to you. Uh, you can show them to your parents if you want, if they, you know, if they ask politely, but, but, it's, but it's up to you. Um, and I think it's important to keep that in mind. So what is it you're buying with all this money? I'll start by saying what I think you're not buying. You're not buying a ticket that gets you a job. I firmly believe that a person graduating from Denison likely has a set of skills that will make her better at lots of jobs, but that's a side effect of what you're buying when you come here, not the thing itself. And I actually equally firmly believe that there are lots of jobs that a person graduating from Denison is going to be worse at. Jobs that are mind-numbing, that are dehumanizing, that require thoughtless obedience, that are harmful to the world. I hope we make it harder for you to do those jobs. And you're not buying an investment like a share of stock or a mutual fund either, something whose market value changes over time, which you're hoping will increase and not decrease. In fact, there's no thing you're buying here at all. It's not like you're buying some valuable object like a piece of jewelry or a beautiful painting. It's not an asset, because an asset is a thing that you own that later on you could sell to someone else. And there's nothing like that here. It's not transferable, first of all. And secondly, I'd argue its value isn't variable, and get this, it can't decrease. So we're not giving you, in return for your money, a thing, not a job, not an investment, not an asset that can be converted into something else. We're giving you maybe an opportunity. What you've gotten by choosing to go to college and by choosing to go to Denison is the opportunity to educate yourself. Notice I'm not even saying here that we're giving you an education. We're just giving you the opportunity to educate yourself. You have to take it up. And education is something you have to do yourself. You have to want to do it, 
and you have to decide yourself how to do it. You want to, that's why you applied to college, and you decided how, that's why you chose Denison. You realize that educating yourself is easier in an environment with great teachers committed to helping you, with a smart and well-crafted curriculum, with inspiring coaches and empathetic staff, and above all, with a community of fellow students engaged in the mutual project of self-education. You've decided, rightly, that Denison offers that sort of environment. Our responsibility is to help you in all the ways we can as you educate yourself. It's not a responsibility, by the way, to make you educate yourself, and we won't or shouldn't try to do that. Um, adults don't make adults do anything. Whether you educate yourself or not, again, is up to you. Now, getting educated is sometimes understood as a process whereby pieces of information out there in the world get transferred somehow into a student's head. And it's true that there's a certain amount of information, hopefully, that you're going to learn as you educate yourselves. If you graduate from here without knowing anything about evolution or calculus or the French Revolution or what I think, therefore, I am means, probably something has gone wrong. But I think the most important part of education isn't so much getting things into your head as getting things out of it, or rather changing the way you think about those things. I'd argue that the best thing you get from education isn't knowledge, but what I might call the virtue of not being sure. There are lots of things you've shown up here pretty sure of, things you're positive you know, things you think are settled. If we do our job right after four years here, there'll, there'll be fewer such things. The lesson I most hope you learn here is the realization that what you firmly believe might not be true. I hope you have the experience here, repeatedly, of being shocked, of coming across ideas that seem absolutely opposed to what you believe most deeply, and finding that they might have some strong arguments in their favor. Maybe you'll hear somebody suggest that free markets aren't fair, or that modern art is ridiculous, or that or that the climate is not getting warmer, or that it wouldn't be so bad if it were, or that affirmative action is unjust, or that through a point outside a line, there's more than one line parallel to the given line, or even that education isn't valuable, or maybe that you're not grown-ups. I hope this happens to you. I hope that your response to it isn't to decide that the person saying it is stupid, but rather to get less sure, to feel the ground beneath your feet begin to sway a little bit. Adults who've had that experience, I think, are better adults. They're better educated, they're better able to live with each other, and more likely to figure out what's true. People who are sure of themselves, to be honest, scare me. Whether they're politicians, and there are a lot of those, or, or, or teachers, or parents, you should be careful of them. Because when people like that get into positions of power, bad things tend to happen. There's a lot more actually to say about this, but I'm completely out of time. Um, um, so, so I'm just gonna stop here and say, if any of you wanna talk about any of these things, I'd love to do so. My office is on the second floor of Nap Hall. And that offer goes to parents too, actually, um, who might have found some things false about what I was saying. Uh, and I did promise to say something to the parents as well. Your kids today are becoming adults. Uh, what a strange and confusing thing to happen. Uh, how surprising and unbelievable, even though you knew it was coming. I've sent two kids off to college myself. It's pretty terrible, <laughs> really. Um, and, and in my experience, it involves a lot of crying. Uh, but of course, it's also wonderful and thrilling. Having them become adults, after all, is in a certain sense why you had them in the first place. If only it weren't so sad at the same time. They will be all right, you know, um, mostly, probably, you know, except when they're not, like the rest of us. Um, um, but even when they're not all right, they'll probably muddle through the way we all do, we grown-ups. And we'll take care, good care of them here, really. Uh, always remembering, though, that the people we're dealing with are adults, and that they're the ones who've hired us to educate them. Thanks for helping them pay for that. Um, and more to the point, thanks for helping turn them into the interesting and smart and eager to be educated adults that we think they are. We're excited to get to know them, and we're pleased to have you as part of our community, too. So enough. Welcome, class of 2019, to Denison, and welcome to adulthood. I'm looking forward to seeing what all you grown-ups are going to do.
uh, Professor Hei Kyung Lee of Denison's Department of Music has composed a very special piece of music to mark this occasion. The fanfare for the class of 2019 will be performed tonight and then again upon the occasion of your commencement from Denison in May of 2019. It's my pleasure to now introduce Denison University's 20th president, Dr. Adam Weinberg. So one of the most fun things I got to do this summer was read Professor Vogel's new book. I think you can probably tell why. If any parents would like to sit in on his classes this fall, Julie can negotiate that. Um, in John Carlo, in, in my view, Denison has 2,000 of the absolute best students in the country. Thank you for representing the students so well. And Julie, thank you for reminding everybody, including my nine-year-old who's sitting right over here, that even in college, homework is due on time. I think the faculty elected you the next uh, head of the faculty after those remarks. So welcome to the class of 2019. Um, welcome to Denison, welcome to Granville, but most importantly, welcome to college. To the family members who are here today, um, I also want to welcome you. You are now part of the Denison family. It's really fun to stand on this stage and to look out at you. This class represents the largest number of applications for admissions in Denison's history. You bring a range of talents, backgrounds, and passions. One of every five of you is the first one in your family to ever go to college. One of every three of you comes from a multicultural background. You come from every corner of the United States. You come from every region of the world. You grew up almost equally in cities, suburbs, and rural communities. You are athletes and artists and community builders, but most of all, you are exceptionally strong students. So the class of 2019, you will rightfully take your place alongside the great Denison classes of 2016, 2017, in 2018 as a fantastic generation of Denisonians. So let me start with the obvious. You're about to experience a type of education and a caliber of education that in my view, every single young person in the world deserves, but very few actually have the opportunity to receive. You've chosen to come to a college where relationships run deep and endure, Students at Denison make lifelong friends. They develop close relationships with faculty and staff. They follow their interests while also discovering new passions. At graduation, our students look back with pride on what they've accomplished and nostalgia about how meaningful and fun it's been. But most of all, they look ahead with excitement 
because denizens prepared them to lead great lives. This is the nature of the denizen experience, and it's the experience that lies ahead of you. If you take advantage of it, denizen will open up ways of being and thinking that you cannot even imagine as you sit here tonight. So as you start your journey, I want to define for you what success in college looks like. I want to actually pick up on some of the things Professor Vogel talked about. There are three components to a denizen education. The academics, the co-curricular, and the community. First, let me start with the academics. A liberal arts education seeks to develop the whole person by preparing you to think critically, understand profoundly, and connect broadly. It will prepare you for success in your personal, professional, and civic life, and it will allow you to adapt as life unfolds. Take full advantage of the intellectual life at Denison. At our core, we are an academic community committed to learning and to certain habits of the mind. It is, to do this, it's important that you take a wide range of adventurous mixture of courses. Throw yourself into your classes. At Denison, we expect everybody to contribute to the intellectual life of the college. Tap into your sense of wonder and your creativity. We ask students to push themselves in the classroom. Learn to communicate effectively, especially to write well. Learn to work with numbers and data. Learn to weave disparate ideas into new ways of thinking. Frame questions, argue, create, do research. A Denison education will help you identify the kind of life you want to lead, and it will help you develop the skills, values, and habits to take on that life and to be successful. Do not make the mistake of coming to a place that has so much to offer and locking yourself on a narrow path. Expose yourself to a wide array of courses and disciplines. That's the beauty of the liberal arts. My biggest piece of advice, get to know your professors. Our faculty are among the best scholars and educators in the world. They're master teachers who came to Denison because they believe in the power of the student-faculty interaction and the magic of the liberal arts. They're amazing and they care deeply about our students. The second major part of your Denison education is the full range of learning experiences that start in the classrooms, in the laboratories, in the studios, but also happen in the co-curricular life on campus, off campus, and for most of you, other parts of the world. Many of you have interests that you're passionate about. You play a sport, have a passion for music, theater, art, or you love to do community service. Denison will give you amazing opportunities to follow those passions. At the same time, be sure to try some new things. Join a club or activity that's totally new for you. Try something you never would have dared to do in high school. And don't be afraid to fail. The Brazilian writer Paulo Coelho wrote, there is only one thing that makes a dream impossible to achieve, the fear of failure. The athlete Michael Jordan once said, I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the game-winning shot and missed. I failed over and over and over again in my life, and that is why I succeed. Persistence is a valuable life skill. The third major part of your Denison experience is the community. A residential college is a once-in-a-lifetime experience. We expect you to be part of this community, to contribute actively to it, and to allow yourself to be shaped by it. To do this, focus on getting the relationships right. Start tonight. Make, you will make a close group of friends. That's just a Denison thing. But don't narrow yourself into a small group of friends. Make it a point to seek out the person in your residential hall whose life experiences are most different from your own and get to know them. Enjoy your differences. Find out what you have in common. You will be expected not just by the faculty and the administration, but also by your peers to engage the range of people in Denison in all of your relationships. It's part of who we are as Denisonians. Values are important here. There's some values that we demand of every Denisonian, including integrity, respect for one another, and respect for difference. And there's lots of values we disagree on, and that kind of difference is what makes Denison interesting and fun. Use your classes, your co-curricular pursuits, and your experiences living with others to develop your own set of very clear values, commitments, and guideposts. They will guide how you think about yourself, and they will guide how others perceive you. We all have something to offer at Denison, and we all have something to learn. We are all teachers, and we are all learners. When I arrived here two years ago, someone said to me, in our best moments, members of the Denison community provoke one another. 
we inspire, demand, and challenge one another to get out of our comfort zones, move away from our myopic views of the world, and take a chance on believing that we might have more to offer ourselves, each other, and the world than we think we do. We do self-discovery and excellence well. So, the class of 2019, your Denison experience will be shaped by how you treat each other. My charge to you is simple. Be a great Denison class that always shows care and respect for one another. I want you to have a college experience that's exciting and rewarding. To make that happen, I ask that you remember that this is a place where people make smart decisions for themselves and where we step up, step in, and intervene when we see other members of the community getting ready to make a bad decision for themselves or for others. This is a community where people generally care for each other and we do not stand idly by when people make decisions that neg negatively impact others. All the data we have about college in the United States suggests that these principles are most critical during the few, first few months of the college experience, especially as they relate to issues of alcohol and sexual assault. It's imperative that you do your part to make sure the class of 2019 gets off to a great start. Be a first year class that looks out for one another. If you see a classmate struggling, step up and step in. Ask for help when you see, when you see someone that's getting ready to make a mistake. Sit with somebody who's sitting alone. I know I sound like a college president and a father. I'm both, sorry. Put most simply, you're talented and amazing people. Be a good friend early and often. See one another as friends, even the people you haven't met yet, and treat each other as such. That's how a great community is made, and it's a long tradition at this college. So let me end where I began. I've been here two years. This is the beginning of my junior year. This is a remarkable college with generations of alumni who have succeeded in life. We're 100% committed to making sure you do the same. To do so, we ask that you embrace all three parts of the Denison education, the academics, the co-curricular, and the community. Allow yourself to be guided by three simple sets of principles. Take full advantage of the intellectual life of this college. Learn from it and contribute to it by diving into your classes and getting to know your faculty. Follow your passions while developing new ones and be part of this community by stepping up and stepping into it. I'm excited to get to know you. Um, if you see me walking around campus and I ask you how things are going, it's not a rhetorical question. Stop and let me know how things are going. If you walk past Monomoy House, big yellow house down on the arts quad, and you see myself, my daughter, my wife, or our two dogs outside, come say hello. And if you like dogs, you're free to take them for a week, a month, a year. I'm just kidding. This community is special. Be part of it. Love it, and it will love you back. And embrace the wonderful Denison hashtag that our students so often use, Denison Proud. So every college has its own alma mater, and Denison's no different. Um, so to help you learn the melody to the song, to, to Denison, is going to be sung by the members of the Denison a cappella group, Ladies Night Out. And here's how we're going to do this. They're going to come up, and while they're doing this, I have one other thing I get to, to do that I really like. I get to formally induct the Denison class of 2019. So I'm going to ask all of our first-year students to stand up. So how about the students now thanking the parents, the aunts, the uncles, the brothers, the sisters, the grandparents, and everybody else who's worked hard to make this happen for you? So the, to the Denison class of 2019, it is my honor to formally induct you as Denisonians. May you use your time here to cultivate the habits of mind and commitment to community, that are long traditions at Denison, and may you embrace and live our mission of becoming autonomous thinkers, discerning moral agents, and engaged citizens. Welcome to Denison. You can sit. So we have our wonderful a cappella group here. Welcome back. Um, so after hearing the first first once, we're going to all rise and join them as they sing the alma mater the second time. The words are printed on the back of your program. Following the singing of the alma mater, we're going to ask that the audience be seated 
while the members of the platform party and the faculty recess. Um, at 8 o'clock, our newest Denisonians will need to meet their August orientation leaders um, right here on the Reshackleford Common to begin getting ready for the busy and important week ahead of them. Um, parents and family members, um, we'll give you just a few minutes to say goodbye to your sons and daughters after we conclude. Um, but, but mostly, I just want to wish you safe travels um, and thank you for entrusting your, um, your sons and daughters to Denison. Welcome to the family. To Denison we raise our song, their college on the